want to do on um, this sheet of paper that's in front of you is to find some of these terms. Okay? So an enzyme. What is an enzyme? Yep. That's what it does. It is a very good. Okay, it's a protein. I wrote three-dimensional down because I want you to get um, in the in the thinking that it has lots of different sides because that's going to come into play here in a little bit. So it's a three-dimensional protein. It um, speeds up the rate of the reaction, makes things happen faster. Okay, the enzyme has an active site. Okay, that active site is where it can interact with whatever substrate it's working on. And we've already done the catalase lab, so you should understand that. We used um, catalase and hydrogen peroxide, and hydrogen peroxide and catalase interacted, and, and it got broken down into water and oxygen. You saw the bubbles, okay? So the active site is the location location on the enzyme where it interacts with the substrate. Okay, the substrate is what? That gets yeah, the down. thing that the enzyme's working on. So when we did the catalase lab, we had catalase working, this was the enzyme, ACE is the enzyme, working on the hydrogen peroxide, right? This would have been the substrate. And it got broken down, right? Into H2O and O2, combining with multiple oxygens. The substrate, the, um, we'll just write the chemical, the chemical, the enzyme is interacting with. <coughs> it's kind of general, it's fine. Um, okay, the product. What, what, what were the products of the catalase lab? Water and oxygen. Yeah. Water and oxygen. Okay, so if, you're gonna, if the enzyme's gonna break this down, it ended up with two different products. So the end result of the substrate. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. It's not necessarily a perfect definition. The chemicals that result from the enzyme breaking down the substrate, that would work as well. After the reaction. After the reaction. Okay, the rate of the reaction. How quickly the reaction happens? <laughs> yeah, how quickly? How quickly the enzyme? Well, I was going to say how quickly the enzyme is able to work, but. The enzyme would be willing to work at its same pace always, and sometimes there's other factors inhibiting that. Yeah, so, okay. how quickly the reaction takes place, the reaction occurs, how quickly the reaction occurs. Okay, so now that we have a few definitions, let's um, play with our toothpicks and find a um, we have a number of different rounds, and let's find a control or just a standard speed. So you guys are all enzymes. You are toothpick ace, okay? Your hands are shaped like this, okay? And your hands are meant to be able to interact with this toothpick, okay? So when you grab the toothpick like this, you are the enzyme, this is the substrate. When you have a toothpick like this, you will break it into half. What are these now called? 
These are now the products, right? You're, you're the enzyme, the toothpick is the substrate, and you're making two products, two pieces. We're going to see how fast you work. Okay, so Amanda, do you want to help up here? Okay, come up here. I'm going to give you toothpicks. You can leave yours there. Everyone else has toothpicks on their desks, right? We're going to see how fast you guys do this. Okay, round one. On your mark, and by the way, we're going to do it for 10 seconds each time. Can I change the amount of time and be able to compare my results? No. So if I say 10 seconds, all of them are going to have to be 10 seconds, right? One at a time? One at a time. You can't. You cannot, yeah, grab more than, and you can't do it with one finger, with one hand. You are meant to have this as your active site. And this is your active site. And when it comes into contact with those active sites, you break it in half. If yes. you want to count as you go, great. If you want to count them after and try to figure it out later, that's fine. Are you ready? Everyone's doing this. On your mark, get set, and go. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I have the acrylic nails on. This is really hard. Oh. Oh no, I'm slower than I And stop. Okay, count up your numbers. I'll drop some. Move your, your dead pieces away, your broken down products. Move your products away. Does everyone still have enough toothpicks to maybe do another round? Yep. Okay, let's just, we want to make sure our enzymes are doing this um, at a nice and consistent speed. If you did 10 toothpicks one time and five toothpicks the second time, is that a good enzyme? No. Now something's messing with that enzyme, whether it's a pH or a temperature, something's making that enzyme not be very uh, consistent. Okay, so what we want is whatever speed you did last time, you do that same speed throughout the rest of this whole time, okay? Because you're the one that we're going to test everything through, okay? okay? On your mark, get set and go. Ah. And stop. Okay. Okay, how many? Six. Six. Was that the same number as last time? Yes. Okay, how many of you broke five or less? Six, seven, eight, oh, no, I eight again. Oh, nine, I did like oh. four of the first. Ten? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Good for you. Okay, so write your number on your round one. So round one was just our control. We were just kind of seeing how fast everything goes. How many we broke? Yes, how many broke? Okay, round two, we are going to add a competitive inhibitor. What a competitive inhibitor does is it mimics the toothpick. So it also would fit into the active site just like the toothpick would. Now, if you have something in the active site of the enzyme, can that toothpick also fit in there? No, it's taking the space. Good answer. Okay, it is, um, it is blocking the way. It's sitting in the seat. Okay, there's only room for one toothpick. So we are going to add this competitive inhibitor in the shape of these, um, these little twist ties. What is a competitive inhibitor? <coughs> a chemical that can sit or bond in the active site. Chemical that fits. Fits into the active site of the enzyme of the enzyme. Let's make a prediction. What do you think would happen if you add a competitive inhibitor? Will that make this enzymes work faster, slower, or no effect? Slower. Why? It's in the way. It's simply just in the way. Okay, are you ready? So with this, we're just going to have Amanda do this. On, you know, you don't have a you don't have a competitive inhibitor. I know, but what is she? 
She's going to do what she always does. Amanda knows how to do one thing. Amanda is an enzyme, and all she knows how to do is to go around, and any time she bumps into a toothpick, she breaks it in half. That's what she does. Okay? On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> Stop. I think that was six. Someone counting? It was six. Six? Okay, so for our results, it didn't work, which is fine. But can you see that it might work if you have that? But sometimes some people like to do with this is they put gloves on. So if we put gloves on our hands, you know, and it's and it's kind of blocking that area, it's going to be hard for her to pick things up. So we can do it with the twisties or not. Okay, let's get rid of the competitive inhibitor. Now we're back to normal. And on this one, what's the next round? Allosteric site. Okay. At an allosteric site, you have a non-competitive inhibitor. Okay, a non-competitive inhibitor is an inhibitor or chemical that is going to bind to a location other than the active site, thus changing the shape of the active site, making it less productive. Okay, so now I have to write all that on the board. Non-competitive inhibitor, a chemical that binds to a location other than the active site, so it's not going to get at the active site. It's going to go somewhere else. Okay? And that location of somewhere other than the active site, that is called an allosteric site. Anywhere else on the enzyme but the active site is called an allosteric site. So it's a chemical that binds to a location other than the active site. And changes the shape of the active site. Okay, if there's going to be an actual conformational change, those hydrogen bonds or those other changes happen that are going to make it, uh, by the way, do you think it'll make it harder or um, easier for her to do what she needs to do. Same. Same? Good? Easton? Make it harder? Okay. Let's do this for 10 seconds, okay? You're just going to do what you know how to do, right? Oh. On your mark. You ready? On your mark. Get set and go. Go. Stop it. <laughs> Go, 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 and stop. No, that was six. <laughs> that was six. Very good. So our results are, She's are determined. super good. I'm really determined to get six every time. <laughs> okay, so if you attach something, another chemical, to a place not at the active site, and it changes that shape, it may make it more difficult. Our example didn't work. That's okay. We don't mind. Round four. Increase the enzyme, enzyme concentration. A increase the enzyme concentration. What's the, who's the enzyme? Amanda. Amanda is. Can we? Do we have any other enzymes in here? Called uh, toothpick yeah, enzyme. Who? You? Would you like to do this? I would love to be in uh, Okay, hold on. Okay, come on up. So we have enzyme. Toothpickase and enzyme toothpickase. They're Aww. identical. Let's see if together they will change. Do you think they will raise, stay the same, or decrease the rate of the reaction? Decrease. Okay, let's find out. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, so much they never come all the way apart. I know. They just like snap in half and then they stay there. Just and stop. Well, that was seven that time. That's all right. I didn't count. <laughs> we'll count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so if we if you add more enzyme into this environment, well, you end up with more product. Yes. Will the reaction happen yes. quicker? Right. So write something like that on your page. My done. Yep. Perfect. Thank no. you. That's it. What should we write? Okay. What should, what should you write? 
If you increase the, the enzyme concentration, what happens? The reaction goes faster. Yeah, you increase the rate of the reaction. The more enzyme, the more uh, substrate you can break down. Good. Hold on. Um, are we on round five? Okay. If I add, now, now you go at your pace always, right? Mm -hmm. If I put this much in front of you, do you think you'd still break six down? You should. If I put this in front of you, would you still break six down? Yes. If I put all of these in front of you, yes. still six, right? Maybe more? Maybe. Okay, so here's the concept with this next one, with round five. If you increase the substrate, does that change anything for the enzyme? No. 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 This enzyme is programmed to always work at a certain rate given a certain environmental conditions like pH and temperature and stuff like that. So what can you write down on your papers for the next round? Does increasing the substrate concentration affect the rate of the reaction? No. No, no it shouldn't. Okay? So write that down. <coughs> well, let's think about decrease. Should we should we actually test decrease? No. Well, there's like three that have like 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, Okay, let's try this just for, for fun. Yeah, okay? it doesn't, she breaks down. So if I increase the substrate, I put a ton right in front of her so that she has a high concentration around her. What can I do to decrease the substrate? Give her five. Just give her one? Yeah. Okay, let's try this. On your mark. Hold on. I always have to get 10 seconds. Get set and go. Go! Time's <laughs> counting. <laughs> and done. Oh, five. <laughs> if I do this one, it's five. Okay, so if I, dip, you know, had a more diluted amount, <laughs> decreased how much of this was around, what happened to her speed? Slow down. Because she has to go and physically come into contact. It's going to take, she's going to have to move around to try to get into contact with these, right? Not that the enzyme is like looking to, you know, move around, but the decrease so on your paper, what, what would you write for that? If you decrease the substrate concentration, yeah. it decreases the rate of the reaction because they're less available. She's going to actually have to look around. And actually, that's sometimes what happens in these reactions. Once that enzyme's been working and it's been producing these products, and it finds less of this um, substrate, then the enzyme actually, because these concentrations have gone up, the product concentration has gone up, and the, um, the uh, substrate concentration has gone down because it's already broken it down, it takes longer because it has to look around, has to move around. This stuff is, this is disappearing, this is going up, and whatnot. Questions or comments on that? Okay, let's stop um, the video. Do you 